Obviously the school subject of religious education is not the only place or time where pupils, young people will learn about religions. Um, they'll come into contact with religions and representations of religion and religious people in the media. Um, they'll have a certain amount um, of uh, nurture either into a religion or not um, from their parents, from their family. Um, the, the children that they socialise with or play with, they'll also pick up representations of different religions, either um, very vivid visual ones, such as their friend who wears a turban, their friend who wears a cross, um, or um, beliefs. Uh, as they play and, and speak with each other, they may uncover different beliefs which are unusual or um, distinctive of particular religions. So there's a whole world, obviously, um, of uh, education about religions in the informal sense that's going on all the time. And also uh, education about non-religious uh, beliefs too. It's going on all the time in the life in the life of the child. Um, and the uh, the curriculum subject of uh, religious education has to fit into that wider context, of course. If we see the whole business of education about different religious and non-religious beliefs as being uh, a matter that's not just confined to one aspect of the curriculum, um, and in fact that takes place uh, in a whole universe of experience out there through the media, through parents, through upbringing and so on, um, then the school itself um, as, a, as a community, as a unit, also has its role to play in this sort of education. And um, I very uh, strongly believe, and the British Humanist Association has always advocated, um, a shared school model in our communities so that children of all different backgrounds, religious and non-religious, will learn and grow together, their parents will mix in the school gate, they themselves will mix in school and so on and so forth. Um, I think when you have a common school like that, um, what the school as a unit can most usefully do to increase understanding um, uh, of different people's uh, backgrounds from each other and so on and so forth. Well, the first thing they can do is make sure that it's a shared school and not a faith school. Obviously, that increases uh, the potential for mutual understanding straight away. Um, but the other thing they can do is uh, they can develop models um, of participation within the school, uh, so school councils and so on and so forth, um, that have a dialogue element to them so that young children learn about each other's uh, backgrounds and the beliefs of their parents and their own developing beliefs, have an opportunity to develop their own beliefs and so on. Um, and you can also create through uh, school value statements, uh, for example, uh, the idea um, of shared human values, but also an, an appreciation of... Uh, differences that exist, the legitimate differences that exist uh, between people. So there's an awful lot that schools can do um, to develop uh, a discernment and a certain amount of knowledge and understanding too amongst pupils when it comes to uh, religions and non-religious beliefs. The school itself as a unit has a very important role in the whole context of education about religious and non-religious beliefs that's quite distinct from its role as a provider of a particular curriculum subject. And that is obviously to be a place where children of different backgrounds can come together, where they can learn to appreciate um, the diversity that exists in society through experiencing it, um, and where they can also have an opportunity with others of different backgrounds to develop their own uh, beliefs as they grow. In the context of education about religions and non-religious beliefs, there are some things I think schools shouldn't do. I don't think it's a good idea and I don't think state schools should be permitted to uh, select their children on religious grounds uh, so that potentially they build up um, a very fragmented and uh, segregated education system across the piece. Um, I don't think that schools should be able to insist on religious worship uh, from their pupils uh, because pupils have their own uh, freedom of thought and conscience uh, and shouldn't be prevailed upon in that way. And I don't think schools should have the opportunity to teach that only one worldview, religious or non-religious, um, is the correct one um, or is somehow superior to others. I think they should uh, take their pupils on a, a journey of discovery and inquiry rather than uh, to insist on and to promulgate a particular doctrine or view. I think there are three things that you would want to get out of RE. I think there are three main reasons why it uh, should be on the curriculum, what its purpose might be. One um, is that you would hope that uh, by learning about different religions and non-religious beliefs, young people would acquire um, a better sense of understanding of their neighbour, their fellow citizen and so on, uh, at least at the level which made continuing participation in a shared society possible. Um, so a basic understanding of you know, why my uh, neighbour wears a turban or uh, why my other neighbour um, doesn't go uh, out on a Friday night or, or, or why this neighbour um, doesn't go 
uh, to church, for example, or whatever. Um, so that's one reason, I think, to give at least a, a basic level of knowledge about religions and beliefs that's required for mutual understanding in a, in a shared society. The second reason is that religions and uh, the great non-religious uh, philosophical traditions are immensely important parts of human culture, um, from Confucianism in China uh, to uh, humanism in the West, humanism in the East, and the Middle Eastern religions like Christianity and Islam and Judaism. Um, they're all very important um, collections of uh, human stories, human wisdom, human traditions, and so on, that are an important part of uh, how we've sought to understand ourselves and the universe over the last 6,000 years or so. Um, so that's the second reason. Children uh, need access to that uh, cultural heritage of humanity. The third uh, reason, I think, is that um, it will give or should give young people an opportunity to make their own minds up about some of the philosophical questions that are sometimes called the ultimate questions. You know, is there a meaning and purpose to the universe? Is there such a thing as a god? Um, where do values come from? Where does meaning come from? And so on and so forth. And so I think it should give uh, young people resources to stretch their minds uh, and, and to answer those questions for themselves. Whether or not the current subject meets all those three aims, or whether it's the best curriculum solution to meeting those three aims, I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, for the present, that's what RE should be about. In light of what I've said RE ought to be, I think that the subject itself requires a really very considerable amount of reform. I think that the primary legislation, both in the way it sets out local determination for RE and that it sets out the content for RE, needs to be scrapped entirely. And that uh, a national curriculum subject um, of education about religious and non-religious beliefs uh, needs to be introduced instead. That subject would, unlike the current primary legislation, uh, be a comprehensive and inclusive one in terms of its content, make it clear as the non-statutory primary and secondary programmes of study do um, that the remit of RE is religious and non-religious uh, beliefs and worldviews. I think that if that doesn't happen, uh, then nonetheless uh, existing local syllabuses um, and to some extent the programmes of study themselves uh, need reform uh, even more urgently. Local syllabuses, I think, are, are still um, overly prescriptive. Um, I think they still uh, prescribe too much content and not enough method um, and ways of uh, thinking. Um, I think that they are not uh, sufficiently inclusive in their scope and broad enough um, to include, uh, for example, humanism. We know that roughly only half of them do, at least, and most of those just make a passing reference uh, to humanism. Um, and I think that the way that local syllabuses are put together, if we're to continue having them, is also in need of urgent reform. I don't think that uh, religious people, uh, because they're religious, or humanists because they're humanist, um, should have as great a say uh, in the writing of RE syllabuses as they do. And I don't think the Church of England should have uh, as great a say uh, in the local committees uh, that write syllabuses and monitor the delivery of R in the local area. So extensive reform really across the board. I think that the Education Reform Act, which gives a specific priority to religions and specifically even above that to Christianity, is in contravention, um, or at the very least is inconsistent with, um, both the Human Rights Act and the European Convention on Human Rights. Um, I think that uh, that seriously needs addressing, both in terms of including uh, non-religious uh, approaches within its scope and also in not giving uh, a preference to Christianity. I also think that teacher training for RE needs to be improved and better funded. RE is one of the, I think it is the subject actually, um, where uh, the largest number of teachers teaching it are not professionally qualified in the subject they're teaching.